Okay, hello people and welcome back to part 43. Um, as you can see, I've pulled my alternator out, um, my battery out. Um, those of you who have been watching my, might know that I've been having some alternator problems. Um, I believe it wasn't charging. So um, this video is going to be all to do with this. We're going to pull it to bits. We're going to test everything with the multimeter. Um, and we're going to make sure everything's um, to spec. Um, and uh, yeah. Let's start by um, taking this off. Now this here is the um, voltage regulator <coughs> held in by these two screws. So let's undo those and uh, whip it out of there. Okay, so yep, this is the voltage regulator, and um, we have these two brushes. Um, they run up against um, these two slip rings in here. Um, these are carbon brushes, very similar to what you'd find in an old school power tool, drill, something like that. Um, these ones have got plenty of life left in them. So yeah, should be good, but we shall test everything. Okay, next up is to uh, get this into bits. Um, three screws. It's not necessary to take this whole front pulley off, so we're not going to do that. Okay, so this should now just pull to pull apart. Um, there we can see those slip rings a bit better. We have a bearing on the end. There'll be another bearing at this end. Um, in here is the field windings. Um, by adding um, power to this, you can increase and decrease the magnetization. Now, these little triangular pieces, um, when you um, apply voltage, you'll make one of them positive, one of them negative, positive, negative, and as this spins, it spins past these windings here and induces a voltage. So, yeah. <clears throat> okay, so first up, um, we're going to test the resistance of this field winding, and we'll turn the multimeter to ohms. Touch the probes together, we'll press this together to zero. Now according to the book, resistance between the slip rings and exciter winding should be 4 ohms, plus or minus 10%. So that's pretty much on the money. So we're happy with that. Okay, next up I want to uh, make sure I'm getting continuity through these brushes. So we'll try that. Yep, on that one. And the bottom one. Yep, beautiful. So that's we're pretty happy with that. Okay, next up is to get the uh, main windings out. Um, these are called the stator windings. Um, there's four screws in here. 
we need to get those screws undone and we'll whip that out. Alright, this should just pop out. There's four screws. Okay, so this um, this part here is our rectifier. Um, these six little round dots, and there's one under here. These are the diodes. So we have these three cables here. One, two, three. That's our three phase coming in. Um, goes through these six diodes and uh, rectifies it to DC. So we need to test these diodes. Now diodes um, allow current to flow in one direction only. I don't know which way around these are, um, but there's one way to find out, or a couple of ways to find out. We use our multimeter on ohms again. One probe on one side, one on the other. We have nothing on the multimeter. Swap our probes around. And we have a reading of 3.94 ohms. So we'll test all six of them. Test the next one. 3.92. Three point eight nine, and should have nothing in this direction. We check this other side. Three point eight five, three point eight eight. 3.85 so all six of those are giving me the same readings so I'm pretty happy and confident that um, everything's with the diodes are okay next thing I want to do is meter the actual um, stator windings um, according to the book stator winding resistance across phase outputs should be 0 0.28 ohms plus or minus 10%. So we'll go that one and that one. 0.28. Bang on the money. 0 0.27, 0 0.28. Bang on the money. And the last one. The probe on there. 0.28. So all my windings are good. My diodes are all good. Um, I'm happy that everything in here is hunky-dory, so I'm going to put this back in here so I don't uh, damage anything. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with all the readings I'm getting, um, so I'm quite happy to put this all back together. Okay, so these are uh, terminals we have here. Um, this big one here. Um, this goes to our battery. This smaller one here, which is called D+, um, this one goes up to our um, indicator light, our charge light, um, then would go through the ignition switch, um, and then at 12 volts. This is the one I had missing um, when it was on the bike. 
this is the one I think was causing me the issue of not charging so I'm going to wire all this up to a battery um, I'm going to get my battery drill and we're going to spin this bad boy up and we're going to see what happens Okay, so we are all wired up. Um, I've got this multimeter showing my voltage of the battery, 13.3. I've got this multimeter here set to amps um, to show me if I've got any current flow. Um, this would simulate my ignition switch turning on. Um, that would be my charge light um, that normally comes on. Um, battery drill is going to simulate my engine. On here are little arrows to say which way this thing is supposed to be spinning. Uh, charge light's gone off. We're drawing 7 amps, 13 amps. Voltage has gone up. charge light comes back on. I can feel a huge resistance in the drill as I speed up. So yeah, there you go, she's working. Um, it was all to do with this which way it wasn't working. So let's get all this back in the bike and uh, fire her up and see if we can get some uh, charging action on the bike happening. Cool. Okay, so we have alternator back in, battery back in, everything's wired up. Um, as you can see, I've put my little charge light there um, temporarily for testing purposes only. Um, that light should come on when I turn the ignition on, start the bike up, rev it, it should go out. We should see um, the voltage go up on here, maybe. That battery's still quite well charged, so let's give her a go. Ignition on. Here we are, we're up to 12.7 uh, volts. Charge light's gone off. Success. My dog does not like any of these bikes starting up, eh? Hey, cool. Success. Charge lights comes back on, turn the ignition off, bada bang, done. Oh, that's a relief. Cool. Now the um, the thing that really threw me on this alternator is that this alternator is set up more like a car would be. Um, the alternator in the XV, for example, um, totally different. Um, this one has the same uh, windings um, but it has permanent magnets um, spinning past those windings and then we've got the um, regulator rectifier 
is this little finned unit here. Um, so there's none of those field windings that we have to worry about. Um, so yeah, that uh, threw me a little bit to be honest. But uh, now I know, um, she's all good. Okay, so one other thing, uh, just before I sign this video off. Um, in the last video I put these uh, headlight brackets on. And one thing I noticed is when you come around and they get too close to the tank, um, we're just about touching on the uh, steering lock there. Um, I have an idea of what I'm going to do there. I'm going to make a bracket something like this, obviously smaller, that's going to slip on top of this. Um, which is just going to make these two posts touch a millimeter or two earlier and I'll try that I'll just make it out of some thin alley obviously this is too big too thick um, so yeah I shall do that and that will hopefully stop um, these from hitting the tank I've tried sliding them up sliding them down twisting them and they just get too close but hey uh, life would be boring if everything went to plan Okie doke people. Well, I think I'll leave this video here um, Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video um, Merry Christmas. It's about that time. I'm not sure when the next video will be out But uh, yeah, have a good holiday and we shall see you guys in the next one